Hello, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com and today talking with you about resolving to become who you truly are. I want to start by referencing a movie that I really love, which is Dead Poet Society, starring the late Robin Williams. And what I love so much about this movie is one of the first scenes in the movie where the English teacher, played by Robin Williams, and his um, character's name in that movie is John Keating, he has this uh, extraordinary presence of mind to instruct all of the young students, the pupils in his class, that are their aspiration is to get into some of the elite universities and schools of higher education. And he instructs them, surprisingly, to rip out the first pages of their book. In fact, he says, uh, go on, make a clear, clean tear. I want nothing left of it. Rip it out, rip. I don't hear enough rips. Keep ripping, gentlemen. This is a battle, a war. And the casualties could be your hearts and souls. And so I, I think that he continues on in this amazing speech. Um, he, he recommends that people, uh, here's another quote from it. He says, huddle up, huddle up. I have another secret for you. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. Medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. To quote from Whitman, O oh me, O oh life of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, what good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? And then Robin Williams' character answers that you are here that life exists and identity, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. What will your verse be? So there you have it. This is an amazing question and I think it's more pertinent now than ever before, especially in light of what's going on with a lot of higher education universities these days. So it, it falls on each of us right now to find what is that verse that we can contribute? Who are we truly as individuals? And where are we connecting to this oneness that is everything? And when you find this, you find your meaning. You find an inspiration, which literally has to do with feeling spirit in your life, regardless what religious background you may have or what you come to find out. And so seeking to find out who you are used to be something people would look forward to going to college for if they could afford to do that. And now, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's this tremendous um, rising tide of voices who are expressing concerns about the educational system. Previously, I've mentioned this book, One Magisterium. I'll show it to you now. It's written by Sean O'Neillan. And the fabulous thing that's mentioned in this book is um, he basically calls for uh, bringing back some qualities of education that seem to be missing at this time um, because we need to entrust care of the educational system to those who both inculcate knowledge and improve our genuine capacity to learn. And O'Neillan explains in his book, historically, both of these pro processes have occurred in a religious environment. It is not unfair to say that we have yet to work out how to frame the drive for understanding in a purely secular context. And if you doubt what Sean is saying, you only have to look at the news to see where some of the technologies go when we don't have morals and ethics and we don't question what we're really doing. Are we improving people's lives or is there some short-term emphasis on profitability and bottom line instead? And another book which is very wonderful to read in parallel with Sean's is Excellent Sheep. This is a library copy of the book so it covers up the author's name. That is William and then, I hope I pronounce it correctly, <laughs> Duresiewicz. And so what he's saying in Excellent Sheep, this is an ex-Yale professor who wrote that book, and he makes remarkable and very clear, cogent, cutting cases for the fact that our university system has atrophied in many ways to become just as conscious of ratings and rankings in U.S. News and World Report, which ends up affecting the way the educational system works so there's this sort of a factory environment and the most elite schools are churning out students who have applied to the schools, they've jumped through flaming hoops to get there, they've got their five point something GPA and they're nine or more 
extracurricular activities, they're amazing references, and they're very good at what they do. So these students are motivated, they're, they seem amazing on paper, but sometimes when they go to college they're hoping to have their entire lives reworked, to be broken down so they can build up again and find out who they truly are. So leadership is not just some empty word that means that it's some, um, you know, doing things that are all, again, based on profitability, but instead have that vital life force that Robin Williams' character was referencing in that beautiful movie, Dead Poet Society. So what we can learn from looking at the educational system, because some of you listening to this right now might not be eligible to go to higher university right now anyway, or you think you can't, but all of us are learning. And you've got the opportunity by watching videos like this one and others to recognize ways that you can start questioning your own beliefs because that's the beginning and so that you don't assume that everything you've been taught is necessarily true but instead you look for real world evidence of what's working and not working in your life and based on that you can then choose what it is you're putting your faith in because actually we all do have faith in something we often don't acknowledge it and these are the beliefs that we go around carrying usually without examining them and so what I'd like to do is end this video with a meditation to really close your eyes just for a moment and focus on who you wish you could be. It's not too late. Wherever you are in your life right now, things can be really wonderful. You can find a new connection to oneness in everyone and everything around you and be respected for your very different and unique way of viewing the world that may have nothing to do with those four top majors right now, which are finance, consulting, business, and medicine, um, and law. I left out law, so I lumped in business. Well, anyway, the idea is that you might have some fascination instead with one of the sciences, with engineering, with art, with literature, with philosophy, with a whole bunch of different wonderful worlds to explore. And it's not too late to go where your passion takes you and to find out what verse you can uniquely contribute to life right now. And this is something I do with people as a life coach, so I love to help people imagine how good can your life get. And so today I hope you're getting just a glimpse of that, an idea of where you could be right now if you had no fear and if you could start feeling the support of people around you who truly would love to see you absolutely succeed at what you are best suited to do and what you're most passionate about. So keep thinking about that and until next time also keep asking that question, how good can it get?